Welcome back to this series. In the last videos, we added authentication on our server so that we can make sure that we issue tokens to authenticated users and that we can then check tokens passed by those users to the backend to make sure or to decide whether access to some resources should be granted or not. Time to now work on the front end, beginning with Angular 2 to implement that sign up, sign in, and so on process, and also to send the quotes there, uh, the tokens there to the backend to get some quotes or create quotes. Now, I will start with sign up and sign in, and then we will work our way forward to storing the token and so on. So let's start in the project here opened in WebStorm My ID by generating two new components. So with ng generate component, I do this with the CLI. The first one will be the sign up component. And yeah, I just use different versions of the CLI. That's fine here though. Then use uh, do the same for sign in so that we get two new components here, sign in and sign up page. And I want to include those pages in the routing. So here I'll quickly add new routes to my routing file. So I will have a sign up route and I will have a sign in route like this. And I want to load the sign up component here, of course, in this case, and the sign in component in the sign in path case here. Make sure to add those imports to the route file and also make sure to add those new components to your app module. It's done automatically by the CLI, but if you're not using the CLI or it somehow didn't do it, make sure to add those um, components to the declarations array as well as the imports up here manually. With that, we got the two pages in place, two components. Now, in the app component here in my header, which is not super pretty, I will add them. And to make it easier to differentiate all those items, I'll add little pipes in between. And then simply duplicate this twice to also have a route leading to my sign up route and then one to the sign in page. And of course, rename this here to sign up and rename it here to sign in and all the nicer styling, something you can do. I want to focus on, on the core here, which is how does it work? So let's work on the sign up page then. We should have a way of reaching it. Let's quickly check if this is the case. If we let this reload and click on sign up, looks good. So let's go to the sign up component HTML file. And in there, I want to create a new form remove the action because we'll let Angular handle this form submission. And in there, let's start with a form group. This is a bootstrap class to give it some nicer styling where I want to have a label for my email address, let's say, so for the mail address. And below that, I'll have an input, which is of type email, which will receive the email. And I'll use the template driven approach. So I'll assign a name of email here and ng model important when using ng model to use the template driven approach make sure that in your app module you import the forms module otherwise you will get an error and all those forms functionalities for template driven approach will not be unlocked so with that let's go back i added this input with ng model on it to get access to this later when we submit the form and i also want to add the form control bootstrap class to this input now I'll quickly copy this twice and actually I will replace the topmost one to not make it type and not for the email. This will be for the name, let's say the username. So username, this will then be of type, not tell, text. ID will be username and name will be username. Then we have the email I just created. And then below that, I want to have the password. So let's name it password here. Oh, let's name this one username here at the top to have all those inputs in place. And we could add a confirm field and we could also go super deep into validation here. I won't do that. I want to focus on the well token thing and so on. So all, all I will do is I will add a button here and this button will be of type submit and will allow me to sign up. Therefore, since we use the template driven approach, in my form, on my form element, I will use or listen to ng submit, which is fired when we click the submit button here. And I will call on sign up in this case. Whoops, sign up like this. And of course, I need to pass a reference to this form. So I'll get this with this trick here, assigning ng form to a local reference named f. This name is up to you, of course. And then passing this local reference to the on sign up method. This will pass the 
JavaScript object Angular 2 creates for us, this JavaScript representation of the form, it will be stored in this local variable and will then be, whoops, and will then be passed to on sign up. If this is all brand new to you, definitely check out some tutorials on the template driven approach Angular uses. With this, let's go to the signup component here and implement the on sign up method. We know that we get the form there. So this will be of type ng form, not ng4, ng form. Don't need to import ng4. So ng form, make sure to add the import from add angular forms. And in there, now all I want to do is I want to submit the form. I want to send it to the server to create a new user. To do so, I will create a new service. I'll create it here in the root folder and I'll name it off service. So let's give it a class or export the class with a name of off service. And in there, I'll add the add injectable decorator because I will inject something, make sure to add the import. I will inject something and that something is the built-in HTTP service because of course I need to send the HTTP request to the backend. So make sure to import HTTP here too. And with that injected, I'll create a sign up method here too. Here I expect to get the username, which will be a string. I expect to get the email, which is a string. And I expect to get the password, which is a string. Now with that data received here, I can reach out to my backend. We'll send a post requester to create a new user. And our URL, our route is basically the same as for the quote service. So this one here slash API at the end, make sure to enter this here. But thereafter it's slash user to create a new user. That is the URL we set up on our backend in the routes file in the api.php file in the routes folder. Of course I need to pass a body too. And the body I do need to pass here is my um, is my is my data here. So we can have a look at the back end. If we go to the user controller, we see that for sign up, we expect to have name, email and password fields. We will also validate them here. So we should maybe also add some front end validation. But first things first, let's pass the name here, which is our username. Let's pass the email, which is our email. And let's pass the password, which is our password. And to make this easier to read, I'll bring it into a new line. Lastly, I will add something else. I will add some headers. So here I'll set the headers on this third argument I can pass to the post method, this object where I can pass some additional configuration. I want to pass some additional configuration. I want to pass some extra headers. So here I will set some new headers, which also receives a JavaScript object as an argument to the constructor. Make sure to import headers from Angular HTTP. And in these headers here, I will basically set the same headers we set here on Postman. Remember, on headers, oops, not on, not on the response here, on the request, we set x requested with, so I'll copy this, x requested with, and the value was XML HTTP request. This is required to make the validation work. Application JSON as content type should be set automatically. We'll see if it works. And with that, the post request is done, is configured. I can return this observable. It's not sent yet, as always. This is just the observable we create here. But we can now send it. So back in the signup component, well, first of all, I will quickly add some basic validation here. So add the required uh, validate here for each input and maybe disable the button with the disabled property binding if the form is not valid. So this basic check here. But more important in the TypeScript code, in on sign up, I wanna reach out to my newly created off service. So we need to inject this here, the off service like this. Make sure to import it from your off service file. Also make sure to provide it. I will do this in the app module here under providers. You should add the off service too and also add the import in this file too, just like you always do it with services. And then in the TypeScript file with the off service injected here in on sign up, I will reach out to it, call the sign up method, get my form value username was the field name, my form value email 
and my form value password to send all these data to the signup method. And then we can subscribe to the observable we get returned here. So here in the subscribe method, I simply wanna listen to any response I get and I will log this response to the console and I will do the exact same with any error I might get, just like this. So to finally make it work in the off service, since we haven't gotten the import the, the map operator, therefore we didn't import rxjs rx like we normally do, we would get an error like this. So what we have to do to avoid getting an error is we have to import observable from rxjs there, like this. We also right now need to import response here. This might look strange because we're not using this type anywhere in this file. Might be solved in a later version of Angular. Right now, I do need to add this import. So if I save this, now we see our signup page here loads correctly. And now oh, let's give this button a nicer style. We'll, we'll have that much time. So let's quickly assign button, button primary. It shouldn't look super nice, but at least a little bit nicer. So let's now try this here, Chris. Test 2 should be a valid email address, which hasn't been taken yet. And then my, whoops, I mistyped here. So my password, let's open up the console to, to see any potential errors and hit sign up. And we get this error. Why do we get this? It has something to do with our course setup we implemented earlier in the series. If we go back to Laravel, and there we have a look at our course middleware in the middleware folder. We set some allowed headers here. And the header we just added, the X requested with header is not listed. So let's simply add it here, X requested with. And we didn't get this error when using Postman because Postman doesn't have this course issue, but we do have the issue when using our JavaScript application, Angular. So I now added this header to the backend, to the backend, to Laravel, to our course middleware created earlier in the series. And with that adjusted, let's simply try again. Now this looks much better, successfully created user, as you can see. Let's look it up in a database in the users table. This is the new user I created a second ago. So this looks pretty good. And with that, we hooked up our front end to be able to create new users. Now you can improve this, you can improve this form, the validation, you can reset the form. That's not really the focus of this series though. I will continue in the next video with authenticating users. So signing them in, working on this sign-in page therefore. See you there.